Like I said, there's a few people off all this hand too. Y'all aren't either one. Houston poker is so great. 60 days, 60K. What up, Stallions? This is week four of 60 days, 60K. We had a very interesting week this week. I hope y'all enjoy following this along. If y'all haven't watched week one through three, go back, watch those three weeks, and then tune in for week four. See how we did this week, all right? Let's go, Stallions. Day 22, let's start off with an evening session at 101 Richmond. I would show up late in the day around 4.30 p.m. and get straight into a 1-3 PLO game. Before we jump into the action on this hand, I have to let you in on how the year's going. The Deuce of Diamonds has been a very big card in my life this year. Every time I see it on the river, it makes me money. So when I need the Deuce of Diamond to come, I bet all the money in to make sure I get Deuce of Diamond, scoop the pot, make me money. Right here, you'll see it come Deuce of Diamond River. I blow up the pot on the flop, and I rake in all the money on the river. Deuce of Diamond. After about five and a half hours, I decided it was time to go home. I looked down and had $6,365 in front of me, which gave me a good profit because I was only in the game for $1,855. That included all time charges and any food that I might have bought too. I've got to talk about this hand while I'm on break. I just came out to the car, so I want a big hand. Currently, I'm up right now. I want a few big hands, but this was the hand that got me going. My hand was the Ace of Clubs, the Ten of Hearts, the Eight of Spades, and the Four of Clubs. The hand was raised to $75 preflop. Now I know what you're thinking. The Ace-10, Eight-Four is not a very strong hand, but I'm gonna decide to play it here because I'm in late position against a Houston legend. In a full PLO game, you will usually have seven to eight other opponents at the table. But really in your mind, you need to be targeting two to three of the opponents that you know are gonna be able to lose a lot of money in this game. And you need to be playing certain hands against them that you wouldn't play against some of the other players. Since that is my mindset in this cash game, I decided to play this hand late in position against the Houston legend that we're gonna call the Sleepy Indian. The flop in this hand comes the King of Spades, the Ten of Diamonds, and the Four of Hearts. Well, the Sleepy Indian decides he's gonna check to me I look down at bottom two pair and decide to bet $150 into the $230 pot. Now I know what you're thinking again. Bottom two pair isn't a very strong hand in Pot Lemon Omaha. And I know this, and I usually don't overplay bottom two pair, but I got a mission. I got a player that I know is gonna lose all the chips in front of him to somebody at this table. And I gotta beat every other person at the table to those chips. My bet accomplishes exactly what it's supposed to gets me heads up going to the turn with just me and the sleepy Indian. The turn comes the eight of hearts, giving me bottom three pair in the hand. This is a very safe turn card for my hand. The only draw from the flop was a possible straight draw. The eight of hearts doesn't complete the straight. Now the only hand that I'm slightly worried that the sleepy Indian might have is a hand like king eight. I think for a little bit and decide that if he had a king on the flop, he was definitely gonna see bet his raising range. So I decide, back to my mission. Time to get more chips in the middle with the best hand right now, and I'll get paid off by the sleepy Indian. I decide to bet $375 into the $550 pot that's in front of me. And guess what? He quickly calls again. Now the river comes the absolute worst card in the deck. It comes the king of clubs, which completely counterfeits my three pair. The sleepy Indian decides to check again to me, and now it puts me a decision. I could have showdown value with the best hand at ace-10, but if he has a hand like ace-queen-queen-jack, or ace-queen-jack-jack, -jack, or ace-ace-queen-jack, he could have been chasing a big draw and counterfeited my pair of 10s in the river with the kings that came on the board. So I have to decide to myself, should I check and risk it, or should I bet back at him since I've been representing a big hand the whole time? Since I've been repping a hand like top two pair, or maybe even a set, I decide that I have to bet this river just in case he has one of the hands I'm afraid of. I decide to go for a value bet bluff here and bet 700 into the $1,300 pot. I've been repping a big hand the whole time and he snap calls me. So I instantly think my hand is no good. I kind of throw it down in disgust, face down, but I want to see his hand. So I just turn over my hand, ace 10, show the eight four as well. His hand goes into the muck. I scoop a, a $2,500 pot 
with a hand that I really almost mugged because I thought it was no way it was good when I got snap called on the river. Luckily, I turned it over and I had the best hand. And because of that is why Houston poker is so great. 60 days, 60K. It looks like I'm riding the momentum from week three straight into week four. I added a $4,500 win last night and now I'm way above pace. This 60K, 60 days is gonna be smooth sailing. Day 23 of the 60K, 60 day challenge. Let's go Stallions. On day 23, I would go right back to where I ran so good the night before, 101 Richmond. The only difference in this session, it would not be as good. I couldn't win a hand, and I definitely wasn't folding King King double suited to this lineup. <laughs> There's a few people I'll fold this hand to. Y'all aren't either one. I would play a three and a half hour session in a 1-3 PLO game and I would end up losing $4,600. Luckily for me, there was a bigger 1-3-6 PLO game going on and they had an open seat. This was the first session in this whole challenge that I started making a series of really bad decisions on when to leave a game. For the day, I was in for a total of $7,000. I had lost $4,600 in the small game so I had $2,400 that I had bought into this big game. Now here's where I went wrong. I had built back up to $5,200, which left me only stuck $1,800 on the day. This is where my competitive nature is sometimes my downfall. I hate losing. And whether it's $200, $100, $1,800, or 5,000, I hate to lose. So I cannot leave that game knowing that I'm a loser at the moment. So I decided to play, and try to get that last 1800 back. Well, since this is the past tense and we're talking about how bad I played and how I should have left, you already know, I lost every dollar in front of me and this is how. In this hand, I got priced into a call on the flop with an open-ended straight draw. There were five players on the flop all looking for that crucial turn card and well, I would get it. The nine of diamond is the perfect turn card for me. I would turn the nut straight with a redraw at a diamond flush. I decided to bet 1500 in which the first player called for less. She had around 1k. The next player decides to call and he has more chips behind. The next player calls for around 650 and the final player folds. I see the worst possible river. The six of spades which pairs the board and puts the flopped flush draw out there. Luckily for me, my straight held to win the side pot of 1k but I would still lose about 1600 in the hand. Not to mention that if I get a blank river here, then I scoop the main pot and would have made me winner on the day. Now I shouldn't have let this hand put me on tilt, but the person who won the main pot instantly racked up all of her chips without even taking another hand. Well, her name on the screen is hit and run. So that really got me tilted a bit. And the people that remained at the game would benefit. I started to play poorly and proceeded to punt off the remaining $3,600 in front of me. After I punted off the remaining $3,600, I decided I would not rebuy. I was playing terrible and it was time to call it a night. The total damage would be $7,085 after buy-in in times. This one really set me back for 60K, 60 days. I woke up day 24 with only one place on my mind, my honey hole, the garage. I have already confirmed my seat for the six o'clock start time, and I was guaranteed a super action lineup. This lineup didn't just consist of one to two action players. It consisted of all action players, which a lot of times ends up being super dangerous. With the lineup in front of me, I'm not expecting to see any $10 flops. I'm expecting to pay at least 75 to $250 just to see a flop. Since this is my mindset, I'm not limping on any hands unless I'm willing to call $200 pre-flop. Well, my seat draw gave me the seat right behind the three biggest action players. Normally, it's good to have the seat behind action players, but in this game, I don't really like it. The guy to my immediate right raises every single pot preflop, and he's very active postflop. It's usually nice being to his left, but on his right is another super action player that will try to squeeze as more players call the original raise. Well, that leaves me trapped in some unusual spots, being the first to call the initial raise. I have all the sharks behind me that are able to limp, then repot over the top when they have a real hand. This leaves me putting dead money into the pot or having to gamble big against three to four other hands with the majority of the money or all of the money going in preflop. 
I would start the day being able to isolate one of the super action players with ace, ace, king, 10, one suit. This is a strong hand, heads up, unless I am somehow up against aces. The guy I isolated in this hand has an unlimited range. So if he has aces, then we will just have to live with it and lose our first buy-in. Holy balls! He actually had aces. The table would have me handcuffed while the two biggest action players are in front of me having a dick measuring contest. They want to see who can push the other one around, but neither one will budge. This has me in a tough spot. So I won't be able to outplay them in many hands. So I'll have to end up picking very careful spots and hope that my timing is right when I decide to get all my chips into the middle. Well, here's a hand I can play. Let's hope to get this hand heads up and hold for a double. Like most hands this day, I would not double up. I would end up rebuying for another one to 2,000 over and over again until I was in the game for 6,500. I would play from 6 p.m until just before 1 a.m. and decided to call it a night. I would end up cashing out $1,500 from the $6,500 I was in, bringing me to a total loss of $5,000 for the night. This would be back-to-back -back nights with big losses. And what hurts about this one? This was supposed to be my honey hole. I was supposed to make up for at least half of what I lost last night, but instead, I've dug my hole even deeper. I have to make better decisions on day 25 or else I might have to have a garage sale coming up on the weekend so I can get some money coming in rather than money just going out. I ended up not going to play a small game on day 25 because it's Friday night and I've got a lot of making up to do. Good thing is, I found a good 136 PLO game at 101 Richmond that I can easily get back on track with for the week. 101 is popping with action. And then my fellow stallion and the Mattress Mac stable winner Houston's very own Will Trilly Win walks in. I was hoping to spend a few hours with Stephanie tonight and take her out to a nice dinner, but instead she had to be the trooper that she is and settle for dinner at 101. Lucky enough for me, David Salgado is always cooking up great meals here at 101, so she doesn't mind meeting me up here for dinner every once in a while. I could barely finish my meal when I ran into a big hand against a tricky player player in this hand, we will call him the Louisiana Hooper. The LA Hooper is an ex-basketball player just like myself, and he has a very wide opening range which makes him hard to play against at times. Another bad thing about this player is that if he wins a big hand, he will immediately leave and go play at another game around town. I decided to defend a late position straddle to a raise by the LA Hooper. I am holding 4457 in my hand and I call $60 more for my button straddle of 15. The flop would come 9-4-3 rainbow, which looks like a great flop for my hand. I flopped the second nuts with middle set and a gut shot straight draw for the nuts. The LA Hooper is always going to see bet this flop, so I decided to raise him right here and try to get some value. He instantly decides to repot over the top, and this is where I made a huge mistake. I usually don't go off to middle set or bottom set to a lot of opponents, but since he has a wide range here, I didn't think it through far enough. The next thing I know, we end up getting over $3,000 into the pot, and I am dead to five outs. The gut shot straight, and the one out quads. I would fail to improve my hand, and had to take the walk of shame to the exit door, rather than to the cash out cage. So, what's worse than playing a six hour session, pretty solid, but giving away all the money in one hand, doing it all in front of your girlfriend? I am officially on a downswing. Houston, we have a problem. And I'm about to start full panic mode. That's three days in a row with losses of greater than 5K each day. My head is clouded and I need a day off to rethink my plan, analyze my play, and my game choices. Then I need to decide what I need to do to salvage this week and not blow off the entire 60K, 60 day bankroll in just one week. Oof, bad three days in a row. Uh... On a 17k downswing after the 25th day still up a little on the on the challenge but i've got my work cut out now we're almost uh 25 days in like i said we got like 35 more days left and i need to run hot these next 35 days and play good uh every one of these last three sessions that i've lost pretty big in i've played decent in and then lost myself in a few hands along the way uh, started losing some and then continued to lose by trying to gamble in some other bigger hands and just 
compounded my losses by just losing more. So tomorrow I'm going to play really nitty. I'm going to try to just squeak out a win. Uh, I'll be playing probably... I'm not sure yet. i got to find an easy game around town. I need to book a win tomorrow just for the confidence. So... Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll go play at like one on one Katie. No, not an easy place. Maybe, maybe like Paramount or something. I'm not gonna try somewhere that I've never played before. Just play a session and try to get back in the positive, even if it's just like a five hundred dollar, thousand dollar win, just to build the confidence and get out of this little slump. But that's the plan. Day twenty five, not very good. 60 day, 60K, in trouble, but turning it around starting tomorrow. Day I decided to take day 26 off and just to go out to dinner with my good friend, Paul. We had a great meal at Liberty Kitchen off of San Felipe. Then I knew I owed Stephanie a night out. All right, we're about to play day 27. I took day 26 off because I was on a 17K uh, downfall. Wanted to try to stop the bleeding, just go out, enjoy the night. So last night went out. With a girlfriend, took the dog out, had a good night, had a lot of fun, got some good sleep. Now, starting the day a little late today, but we're gonna go play at the garage and we're gonna start day 27 and we're gonna make up for a lot this week. Currently, I'm down this week. It's the first week I've been a loser. So, had three bad sessions in a row after a good start to the week. So, fell quick. Uh, I think I was, I'm down 17K in the last three days. I won like 3,500 the first day. So down about 13,000 this week. And I need to recover a lot of that today. If I recover four or 5,000 today, I'll be decently okay. I can end the week tomorrow with a good win. And as long as I just stop the bleeding for this week, I will, uh, I'll feel all right with the week and uh, still get back on track. 60 days, 60K, here we go. We ended up having a great night out in the heights with a few of our friends. And then I realized at the end of the night, with peace, love, and Texas on my mind, I knew I would wake up day 27 and turn it all around. Day 27 ends up being my favorite day at the garage, the high hand cash game day. So what does this mean? What's the high hand cash game day? Well, for every Thursday and Sunday for the past three months, there were two high hands given every night. Those two high hands each receive $150 in chips, but they can only be redeemed on this one day. That means the house is giving back around $8,000 in chips, and so there's a lot of extra money on the table today. I would get there a little late today, so I started on the second table. My initial buy-in would be $1,000, but I only had to pay $850 since I did have one high hand. I started out the day getting a bunch of big hands that included aces a few times. I would win these hands and be off to a hot start. After three big losing sessions, I would be playing extra careful today. I end up folding a full house on the turn to a player I never really played with. I'm not gambling today though. I need to make sure I am certain about my reads and I'm controlling hands to the river to manage my stack the whole session. But after playing with him a few more hours, I realized I had made a terrible fold. At this point in the challenge, I've played about 150 hours and I've just ran into my first free roll. A free roll is when you have the nuts and you are up against another opponent that is also holding the same hand. The reason it is a free roll is because you have cards that can come on the river to improve your hand, but there are no cards that can come that can improve my opponent's hand. As a PLO cash player, free rolls are what you live for. These are the type hands that can get you big winner for the week, or in my case this week, can get me out of the trap. Free rolls don't come easy and they don't come often. My goal for this challenge is to play at least 350 hours. So if I can get three to five free rolls in that entire 350 hours, I'll be happy. Now I'll be even happier if I can win one to two of them since most of these pots will be for at least 5K or more. In this free roll hand, I turn the nuts with the four five. The board also has two hearts on it and I am holding hearts in my hand. I also have a 7 in my hand, which means I can improve my straight with a 4 or 5 to make a 7 high straight. With the 2 hearts on the board, the 3 hearts in my hand, and my opponent holding 1 heart, that leaves me with 7 additional hearts that I can make to improve to a flush. My opponent's hand was 4, 4, 5, 6. This means that he was holding 3 of my outs for the free roll, 
So that only leaves me one four and two fives, in addition to the seven hearts, giving me a 10 out free roll. Unfortunately for me, we ran this river one time and I would not hit the free roll. This would end up being a split pot in which I would just get my money back. I would make a few more hands throughout the night and would end up cashing out $6,430, bringing me to a total profit for the night of $5,430. This would be just the win I needed to salvage my week with just one more day to go. What's up, Stallions? We're on day 28 of the 60 Day 60K Challenge. As you can see it's raining beautifully out here in Houston, Texas. One thing we do get a lot of is rain. And the best thing to do on a rainy day is go sit inside and play poker all day. So this is a huge day for me. I'm coming off a 17K downswing. I followed it up last night with a $5,400 win. So I'm still down a lot for this week. And it's the last day of the week. I want to end positive. Uh, it's not looking like I'm going to get a positive week, but if I can salvage some of the loss, I'll be okay. Um, I mean, you never know. I've had a couple 10K days in this challenge, so if I can get a 10 to 11K day today, I'll get out of the trap. That'll still put me behind the pace because not only am I down a lot right now, I'm not up the 7K I need to be up this week. So uh, being down 9K really means down. I'm down 16K. thunder i'm about to bring the thunder so one-on-one -on -one richmond y'all better get ready i'm coming let's go stallions i decided to end the week on day 28 at 101 richmond i walk in and immediately get set down at a table with donkey alert donkey alert donkeys everywhere my very first hand i would sit down to my favorite pair and i decided to gamble with it right then and there i blew up the pot pre-flop and would see a flop with my nine on it it wouldn't be a very big pot, but I ended up flopping middle set and felting a guy with a short stack. That would be a good start to the day, but we still got to win another $7,000 in this session just to get even on the week. I would continue to run good with premium hands. Here I would flop top two pair with a gut shot at the nut straight, and I would end up spiking the jack in the river for the nuts to scoop a big one. Things are going right on track, and I just need to find that one breakthrough hand to get me winner for the week. What's up, guys? Just taking a break out here at 101 Richmond. Man, the second day in a row that I've had a free roll with seven, seven, uh, 11 outs yesterday, seven outs today. Uh, free roll for $10,000 pot yesterday and about a 6K pot just now. So getting in the free rolls, but not hitting them, still splitting the pot. Uh, luckily, there were three people in both hands, so still want a little money, but man, it's nice turning a nut straight and having multiple outs at a free roll and getting a lot of money in the middle, knowing you can't lose and you have a chance to scoop a big pot. That's what Omaha uh, is about. So, man, this whole challenge, those are I think my first two free rolls in over 100 something hours. And I got them in two days. Didn't hit either one of them, so it's kind of frustrating. Uh, hopefully I'll get another one in this challenge and it'll be a big one and I'll scoop it. So we'll see. I would play for a total of just under eight hours in this session and cash out and even $3,500. I was in the game for a total of $2,123 after time and buy-ins. So that gives me a daily profit of about $1,400. These end of the week graphs will show you exactly how much damage I did to my 60 days, 60 K challenge. As a poker player, you're gonna have big weeks and you're also gonna have losing weeks. It's just part of the game. The difference between players that play full-time for a living and players that wanna play full-time but can't is the way they manage their money after big wins and losses. When I was just starting in the poker world, it was hard for me not to go spend thousands of dollars on pointless shit after having a big winning session. But as I've gotten more experience with age, I've realized that material things don't mean anything. And the only thing that matters is security. I've matured to the point now that I can win $10,000 in a night and I won't spend a single dollar the next day because I know it's always more important to still be bankrolled, to handle a big loss, and have the ammo to shoot your way out of a bad week or month. Because like we say, shoot or shoot. Just like everything else in life, poker's the same. It takes money to make money. So if you can manage your money, combine it with a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill, you should have no problem making money playing poker. If you haven't already, 
please subscribe to the Poker Stallions YouTube channel. That way you can keep following along as we take on the 60 day 60K challenge. Going into week five, I'm gonna be down $11,600 off the pace. So I have a lot of making up to do and it should be a fun one to follow along.